We just finished talking about uh, drawing some resonance structures, but now let's look a little bit more at that and let's focus on drawing every or all of the resonance structures. Now, it's important to be able to draw all of the resonance structures. One of the main things about that is it gives us a better picture of what that molecule or ion or whatever we're looking at actually looks like. And it shows us some areas where the reactivity could be a little different than other spots on the molecule. And all of that's important to know. Now, keep in mind that we do not change atom positions. We are only moving electrons or electron pairs generally. And one of the ways to keep track of what we're doing is something that I was doing in the last video, which is drawing the movement of electrons using curved arrows. Now, if I want to draw two electrons moving, I can use a double-headed curved arrow. So I draw from the electrons to where they're going and I put a double head on the arrow. And then, since there's also some electron movement over here, I'm going to draw an arrow there. And then we can draw the other resonance structure. And this will help us kind of keep track of what's happening. And then we don't have to sit down and try to think, have we drawn all of the Lewis structures that are possible? We, if we can move it around with the arrows, it, it really helps speed things up. So there's a resonance structure here where we can move the double bond in the negative charge. And, you know, it ends up being a hybrid, of course, where, oh, I, I drew it in pen, of course. Well, all right, so there's that, but let's draw the hybrid. Um, partial negative, partial negative, and then like so. There. It really looks kind of like that. All right, one thing to be careful about is to keep the octet rule in mind, especially for carbon. So do not do this. Just be careful. So let's use the same structures we have above, right? Now you'll notice I drew an arrow here and then I immediately drew an arrow there. What if I didn't do that? What if I just draw the arrow here and then I'm like, all right, and then I'm gonna draw this as an intermediate kind of structure. Well, hopefully you see the problem here. This central carbon has five bonds to it. That means it has 10 electrons. This is not allowed. So just be careful when you're drawing these and make sure that when you're doing it, you're actually getting not more than the octet rule, right? So, so don't do that part, right? You'll have to kind of at least shift some things around. And just think about it. If this carbon already has an octet, one, two, three, four bonds to it, something around it has to change in order for it to keep an octet or not go beyond it, right? So that's kind of important. So watch out for that. It's easier than you think to do. All right, let's look at another example. This time, let's look at something with a positive charge. 
So here we have some ion. It's got a positive charge on this carbon. And let's take these electrons and we'll scoop them in between the carbon and the oxygen. And when we do that, we'll move the positive charge over onto the oxygen. Like so, and those are the resonance structures from there. Now, so far what I've drawn has two resonance structures. Even in the previous video when we were looking at um, formate or benzene, two resonance structures. But there can be more than two. So let's say we have this alkene, it's got several double bonds in it, and there's a positive charge right here. Well, there are several resonance structures for this. So we can scoot that double bond over, and then this plus charge here, still double bond there and there. We can do the same thing, kind of with the next double bond. Scoot that over. Now the plus charge is on this carbon. And, you know, there's, there's some hydrogens on here too. I'm just omitting them for now. We can scoot that again. I'll drop down here. And now there's plus charge on that carbon. So if we were to draw the resonance hybrid of this, And then we would have plus charge here, 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 and here. So there's four different positions on this molecule that that positive charge can move to. And we're allowing this, these double bonds to distribute over these carbons. Now notice, we really can't do anything with this carbon out here, and we cannot move the positive charge there. Or, in in these carbons here, right? None of these are have the positive charge ever on them. So if there was a reaction, let's say we have something that's really negative, we call those nucleophiles, it could potentially come in and attack here, 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 or here, but not anywhere else on the molecule. Right? only where the positive charge has been spread out to. So we draw all the resonance structures to get a better idea of what the molecule is, what its structure actually looks like when we get this resonance hybrid. And we can also identify potential reaction sites on the molecule that we might not have noticed before without drawing the resonance structures. And we may be able to explain other reactivity when we include the other resonance structures. That's one of the first things that chemists will do. They'll start drawing all the resonance structures to try to identify, oh, why did it react there? Oh, there's a partial negative charge there. There's a partial positive charge here things like that are very important when we're looking at this. Make sure that when you're trying to draw these that you keep the octet rule in mind and that you do not move any of the atoms positions and you, 
you are only moving electrons. All right, so that's a little bit about drawing all of the resonance structures, and we'll see you in the next video.